Welcome back. Now, cigarettes are anything but cool when it comes to your health. Africa 54's Lino Mudu joins with the story. Welcome, Lino. Hello, Vincent. Hello, everyone. Well, a big tobacco company see Africa as a bottomless market, but the Congo and other governments are passing anti-smoking laws, and health officials are making sure young people understand the dangers before they light up. Hundreds of pupils from various schools in South Africa's commercial capital, Johannesburg, recently attended an exhibition organized by anti-tobacco activists and the South Africa Cancer Association. It was part of activities around the world marking Anti-Tobacco Day on May 31st. Joel Perry, the association's head of advocacy, says there is an urgent need to educate the youth of the negative effects of smoking. The search for pleasure is there and entertainment is there. And so young people become uh, a new market for the tobacco industry, for uh, the alcohol industry, and other uh, uh, industries with substances and so forth, to attract them because it's a new client base. So once you, once you come into that, that as a client base, you're likely to be a customer for many years going forward in the future. Experts say tobacco use is a key risk factor for heart attacks, strokes, cancers, diabetes, and other chronic diseases. Together, they account for 60% of all deaths worldwide. Some of the youngsters say they are aware of the dangers. I've learned that if you smoke, you, there, you know, um, there's a lot of things inside the smoke, like there's um, rat uh, poison and and things like that inside and um, must not use it. I won't try smoking, so it's not healthy, it kills your lungs and destroys every part of your life, so it will ruin your life. Experts warn that Africa could be tobacco's last market capable of any growth. Last year, the Association of Southern Africa's Tobacco Producers warned that strict anti-smoking measures would impact negatively on the economies of some African countries. However, anti-smoking campaigners say the high cost of smoking puts a great financial strain on health services and human resources, diminishing any real returns. Many African countries have passed a laws that ban tobacco advertising, promotion and sponsorship. Dr. Kustudia Mandlet is Kenya's representative at the World Health Organization. Kenya is one of those countries who have really domesticated, I mean, transforming that uh, uh, the convention, the global convention, in a law, in act, uh, the Tobacco Control Act of 2007. And um, yeah, we have a, a tobacco control board and that we have a, a, a plan of action in terms of tobacco control. So there is a lot being done uh, in Africa. Despite efforts in Kenya, some statistics say at least 3% of all deaths of men in the country in 2012 were triggered by the use of tobacco. Never hurt, it has never harmed me anyway, so just continue smoking, it's kind of a disease. Stop smoking, don't feel okay, you feel like you're down, you need that tobacco to keep running. Anything that has to do with uh, your health, eh? Is, is, is important. So there's the worry uh, that maybe one day probably I'll, uh, I'll get what do you call it, uh, lung cancer and so on. So it's a, it's a big worry, but again, the addiction makes you not to quit. And for more on smoking in Africa, we are joined here in the studio by Joshua Chalo, Director of Africa Programs for the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids. Mr. Chalo, welcome to the show. Thank you. So we understand that smoking obviously is a problem uh, in Africa, but how much of a, of a problem is it among the youth? A big problem. First of all, as we know, uh, tobacco is the source of, the leading source of a preventable death across the world. Each day, eight to 100,000 young people get addicted to tobacco use. And the big tobacco industry companies are marketing to young people. Is it because to, they are more open to yeah, rece makes it, receiving these messages? Absolutely. They make it look cool. They make it sound like it's fun. And they use beauty. They use aesthetics. They use all sorts of attractive methods. But that's where the problem is. And the work we do is to try to make sure that children don't get exposed to tobacco advertising 
that we can prevent uh, addiction and initiation to tobacco consumption. So there's a huge problem in Africa. If you look at the tobacco industries, they're marketing, they marketing in Africa, they're looking at the African continent, and that's what we are trying to do is to prevent the increase in tobacco consumption and also be able to prevent death and diseases resulting from tobacco use. So when you look at the youth, the population of uh, young men and women and the kids, what type of message uh, will resonate uh, with that uh, population as opposed to the adults? First of all, I think uh, just like we had on the, with the young people speaking on, on, uh, a moment ago, is creating awareness on the deadly and devastating nature of tobacco use that tobacco kills, causes disability, and is a dangerous, poisonous product. That message is critical for young people. Secondly, is to try and make sure that young people can also use that information to pass it on to others, but also work with governments to pass laws within the Framework Convention to Back Control, a convention of the WHO, or the World Health Organization. We believe that if every government nation uh, in Africa passed strong control laws uh, on, on tobacco, will be able to prevent death and disease on the continent. So uh, briefly, what is the main message of the campaign for tobacco-free kids? Basically, we are trying to encourage governments in Africa and around the world to uh, implement laws that are fully compliant with the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, number one. Number two, there are proven methods of tobacco control. Uh, we're saying uh, tax increases on cigarettes, for example, smoke-free environments. Uh, ban on uh, tobacco promotion, advertising, and sponsorship. And we are also saying that we need to warn, uh, have uh, label warnings, uh, pictorial warnings to warn people on the dangers of tobacco use. So in an ideal world, the tobacco companies will not exist. That will be the ultimate solution. But then, as they have to run their business, what is the, the best approach? We are calling for regulations, and okay. we are saying that for every African government yeah, they, all the African governments, 43 of them at least, have ratified the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. And we, as a campaign for tobacco-free kids, are calling upon the African governments to simply pass laws that are compliant with the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control okay. to protect health, to prevent death, and save the future of our continent. Okay. Mr. Chalo, thank you so much for your time here. Thank you for having me. Great. And that's our Africa Health Network report for today with Mr. Chalo with the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids. For more health news and developments, be sure to visit our website, africahealthnetwork.com.